Hello, and welcome to Containment Breach 3-Minute Meets. I'm Christian DeMatteo, co-founder of Fugitive Poems, and uh, we're going to be talking with two incredible creators from Containment Breach of Hi. Clouds <laughs> and Ether. Here they are. This is Michael and Case Hill. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Containment Breach series is a stupendous collection of anthology uh, uh, comics, each with its own universal, uh, uh, that's not the word I meant at all, umbrella, but universal too, why not, theme. Uh, our very first volume, which you can get at FugitivePoems.com, was Quarantine Chronicles, for reasons you'll never guess. I've made that joke on every one of these. I keep forgetting <laughs> to see all of them. Uh, and this one was Myth Reborn, uh, for reasons you'll actually never guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, our goal is to put together incredible up-and-coming indie creators and uh, tell wholly unique stories. And we've done that. And I have with me two creators of one of the most unique stories we've ever gotten in one of our containment bridges. Uh, it is it is badass, like I can't even explain. It thrilled James and I, co-founder James Lines. Uh, and we've gone back to it, like while we're working on other people's, we'll just keep popping back just to look at it again. <laughs> I'm not awesome. kidding, guys. Yeah. I freaking love that comic. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> Michael Case. Uh, Michael, we'll start with you because uh, you put your name first and made a big okay. deal of it. Uh, who the heck are you? Uh, well, my name is Mike. Um, I am a uh, I'm the writer of our two man group, um, and I um, what else is cool? Um, Very little. Uh, <laughs> I write stuff. Man, we should have planned this. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I've been writing for a long time. We've been doing comics together for a long time. We tend to do what's our a long time? Uh, oh gosh. We've been talking about comics for like a decade and a half. I think, I think uh, our first one was 2014. Maybe we yeah. kind of, we, yeah, we had some of the works by 2014. Yeah, it's been together. just about 10 years. Yeah, yeah. we're getting there. Um, but yeah, we always do our bios as one because it's sort of hard to figure out our independent sort of paths because it's always kind of been in tandem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a process. It's it's like this. It's not like he writes and I draw. Yeah. We we kind of work together. Yeah, sort of it's sort of back and yeah. forth. But um, yeah, I mean you, I have you guys I are just... we haven't said this. You guys are brothers. Oh yeah, yeah that's we right. are. Yeah, we're brothers. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we can't walk into a Barnes and Noble anywhere without somebody saying we're brothers. But um that's a really inside joke. That's fine. Anyway. Uh, say good for you for finding Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I have books stores okay. anymore. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's probably they're rare now. Um, but yeah, I went to a, a school for film writing, actually, screenwriting, um, and I had a degree in that, and it just sort of matched up beautifully with his degree in art. So um, it was a, it was a, it was a match made in heaven. That's awesome. Yeah, quite literally, yeah. At, at yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been wonderful. Yeah. So, so case, uh, do you have anything to add about yourself, or has Michael covered it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've not much. I've loved comics for as far back as I can remember, and. Uh, I always sort of wanted to make them, but didn't see it as a realistic thing. I kind of had this idea that I was supposed to be an artist and I went to school for like a fine arts degree. And then like, mm -hmm. I realized I had a brother who wrote scripts. I'm like, Hey, let's make some fucking comics. Uh, am I allowed to cuss on this thing? I, hope I was going to say, I forgot to say no, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it has happened. The cat is it's out. My, of it's my baseline. I'll try to, I'll try to clean it up. But yeah, I, was, I realized that like the opportunity was because I'm not a writer. And so, like, you know, when you're an artist and you're not a writer, you're like, I have to either find a writer or just do my own thing. And um, when I realized he was good for something, it was really kind of a moment. It was great for me, too. Yeah. It's an incredible love. Uh, there's a reason. It's a purpose. Yeah. 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 All of this does, that, case, yeah. does that mean you're the older brother? Yes. Ah. By a good bit. I'm about 10 years older. I'm... Oh, is that right? Yeah. Depending on the month. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nine years older. <laughs> it really matters. <laughs> <laughs> i am uh, 14 and 19 years older than my sisters uh, and okay. about that kind of gap uh you're telling a little bit of the story of um not not the brother family part but james and i uh james is a uh trained fine artist uh and i'm a writer and uh we are so lucky to be a team because so many writers are out there see K case is in the in the catbird seat it's the writers that are out there begging for someone to draw their crap oh, and the artists are like i don't yeah. know throw me, what have you um, oh man uh, so i'm really lucky that whatever insanity comes into my head i have someone who's willing to draw it yeah um, that is nice. i like drawing his crazy it's yeah fun. i can't imagine yeah. if we were both independent yeah. neither one of us would be very happy i don't no. think <laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's hard. And I'm I'm James and I have found a sink and we're not brothers. And we met each other uh, through work about seven years ago and right. suddenly realized that we had a, a, a mind meld of, of dark insanity. Uh, and uh, when I come up with something crazy, uh, he draws it. And that's and then he makes it even worse. And I mean that in a good way. <laughs> um, now, you guys. Uh, so you've been making comics for a little while. And um, what what kind of stuff have you been working on? Uh, we have one. Our first real comic was uh, this kind of first attempt at a war between rodents that have like, I mean, it's like World War II with rodents with like some sci-fi and cool stuff in it. Um, and then we did a space, a weekly space online comic for a little while. Yeah, we got kind of, because the, the first one's called The Bear Slayer. Well, no, that, that was technically the third one. Okay, you're right. Okay, so the first, <laughs> all right, let's back up. The first one was called Emberline. It was this sort of space, like, war thing. And then, um, you know, the long-term nature of comics, um, for our comics anyway, got kind of dreary for us. So we started doing this weekly, like, pump out, um, I guess it was like four to six panel. Yeah, it was like, a, I, I asked him to give me a one-page weekly comic, like, write something for me, and we could see if we could just do, like, a like a weekly comic of, and um, it was fun. It yeah. was like with no prep, no like overarching story. It's just, you write it one page yeah. at a time and see how it evolves. And, and I think that gave us a lot of our technique, like our process. And that's called Planet Rex. And I yeah. don't know if it's available. It's anymore. on our, we have a, we used to have a comic company called Ignoble Comics um, before we started wanting to work for other companies. And um, it is on our Instagram. Um, so I, yeah, it's Ignoble Comics um, is our handle. So, yeah. okay. Uh, then All we right. made Bear Slayer, which we self funded. Um, yeah, we did. The and then the so. then the coronavirus happened. Yeah, and we stopped going to like cons for a little while. And um, then it's just been working. This is uh, the first real beginning, middle, and end thing we've done since, just because life yeah. happens a lot. <laughs> this sort of put us out of the dirt. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Well, I, I'm glad. I was so taken with what you guys sent to be part of uh, Containment Breach. So for for those that don't know how Containment Breach works. Uh, we put out a call for creatives. Um, they have no idea what we're going to do. Well, there's going to be an anthology, and if you'd like to be part of it, we don't want a pitch or anything like that. Send us what you consider your best work. And then for the most part, we pick people and pair them. Uh, not many people come in as teams. We've been getting more teams, actually. But for the most part, we'll find a writer and an artist that we really like and say, hey, what would these two do together? And sometimes that we get some teams uh, and they send stuff and we really dig it. And then we welcome, we tell them, all right, you've been accepted. Uh, if you want in, let us know. Here's the theme of the book. And you're going to have to come up with a story that fits under this umbrella, or as I said earlier, universal theme. Um, <laughs> and then we do something nobody else does. And I keep saying that so that this is recorded for when other people start seeing it. <laughs> I can be like, we're doing it first. One of them makes it into the final cut, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we have every team come up with a prompt some kind of random prompt uh, terrible twos uh, the shoe i lost last christmas or whatever the hell it is and we have they send them to me i shuffle them up and give them to the teams and each team now has to come up with a story that somehow fits under the uh, the umbrella concept of the book which by the way is is wide as well yeah and includes that prompt in some way shape or form and what this does is it makes it fun it's it really cool. is a cool way of doing it. I, I'm yeah. so excited with it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that because I, I yeah. love this. And I got a little mad at him for sending in the prompt because it was like such a good prompt. I kind of wanted to keep it for myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was yours that you sent oh, in? The universe at the edge of the hallway or the end of the hallway or something. Yeah, like some yeah. last, yeah. yeah. And he I, loved it. And I was like, all right, we'll send it. And then it was like, no. <laughs> no, I wanted to keep that one. <laughs> oh, oh, I, wow. I have that happen with sometimes of the ones that I put in. Yeah. Invariably, the next day I'll be driving and go, Oh, I've got a whole story for that. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn it. Oh, man. Yeah. So we've had a really positive response to it. It gets us wholly original stuff and it really lets people stretch their creative muscles. And this is the big thing. I, it, because people know that this is what we do, it shows the absolute talent of every creator. What we're hoping to do is raise the banners of everyone so that they, they get more work. And you guys showed up like nobody's business. Um, fun with it yeah well, <laughs> it's insane it was good it that's, was great that's yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah that's what i like to hear I, I think we both sort of throw ourselves like just 
jumped in and yeah. like let's do the best we can and try and to knock it out of the park it was great yeah. because like not having uh, the prompt until you know we knew we were going to start this process was weird because we didn't have any pre-planning yeah um so it was really just sparks flying and then we had to sort of latch onto something and run you know well you, uh, and we don't give a lot of time on purpose and, no, and yeah, if, exactly, if you yeah. feel any better we do the same thing yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the advantage i have is i know what the umbrella theme is going to be before right yeah uh but i james and i take our prompt from the pool as well no, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. great. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that. everything. Well, I'm not going to do this fun game and not play along. That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, no, it's kind of. It's almost like an exquisite corpse. Like, you, it's, I like the idea of doing that. It's you just took it. I was just going to say it, <laughs> it's, corpse. it's yeah. a wonderful yeah. exercise. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love, I love improv creation. But we took our prompts, and we, I, I, I sit down as the writer and come up with whatever and i start writing and then i give it to james and james gives me his feedback and we really work together do you guys find that you the final product is an amalgam of creation oh yeah oh, it's yeah, a back definitely. and forth the whole way through yeah. it's yeah yeah i a lot, a lot of times like i'll just have a stupid idea and i'll text it to him like what if we did a comic that's rodents fighting in a war like star wars and then in a couple of months, I'll get I'll, a couple of weeks or a couple of months or depending on how long it simmers, like I'll get a script and then I'll get to start drawing. And yeah, it's that's yeah. it's wonderful to have all that work together. Yeah. And it helps that I do the lettering, too. Um, and we've talked about this because like I'm also there for like while he's doing the art, I get the, the paneling and everything. And it's just always back. And yeah. Forth. Um, so we're always talking about what. Yeah, it changes better. as it goes. And yeah, sometimes absolutely. I'll be like, no, we're not doing that. I'm doing something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I gotta make a note here to delete this part because James wants me to start lettering, and I, I don't want him to know that you guys. Do. <laughs> um, like I, I have been nervous yeah. about yeah. delving into that pool. <laughs> um, though I wonder. So let me let me ask you this: when I when James James will put like a, a dummy lettering on his uh, on the layouts. And to me, that's become, and I didn't know this when I first started writing comics, that stage has become a huge part of my writing process. Because once I see it on the page, uh, I end up rewriting. Yeah, we, we, we actually, I think we talked about this like yesterday. Yeah. We're like, I uh, know it's a little while ago. But anyway, um, when, when I see it on the page, I'm like, oh, that's that's not at all what I meant. Like, yeah. That's not what I want, like in the bubbles. You never know how it's going to read until it's yeah. there. And then like reading it like a comic, you're like, oh, no, yeah. I want it here. And then I want this. Yeah, like, absolutely. I, I'm doing uh, another comic for the book with uh, uh, Jay Sheik. I don't know if you know him. He's terrific. He's got Hush Ronan coming out from Band of Bards. He's he's awesome. Oh, nice. And uh, uh, Kevin uh, uh, Kevin Lintz is lettering from the Comic Jam. He's done. A, he actually did a comic years ago called uh, Slugs about slugs in World War II. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, oh. And it, it, which is really cool. I was thinking that. Um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get up yeah. with that <laughs> get, get rodents versus slugs you gotta do a, yeah. like a, a batman ninja turtle crossover rodents yeah oh man uh, <laughs> right there man <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of crap that happens to creatives right somebody says something offhand and the next day you're gonna have it all figured out, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot there's a panel that I have been utterly dissatisfied with what I wrote there for the dialogue. And it, I've gone, I've changed it like 30 times. And I just wrote in the script to both of them, put this on the page. When we get to that stage, hopefully when I look at the panel, I'll be like, oh, because it's yeah, yeah, one yeah. panel that's just wrong and it's haunting me. Mm -hmm. But I know that I can depend on that part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah we, it's definitely like, I, because I, I, I'm such a fan of reading comics that it's hard for me. I don't know, maybe it's one of my limitations as a writer, I don't know. But when I'm writing the script to get that feel of the page turn of like how the panel settles and like all that stuff, like it's reading is a totally different experience. So Yeah. Oh, it is, it's kind of like the comic version of hearing it out loud. Like until you see yeah, it in the yeah. context, it's you can't see how it lands and how it connects with what's going on in the action yeah. and the panel yes. next to it. it and yeah. all of that is, is it's weird because you treat it as multiple compositions in a single composition mm -hmm. going on simultaneously. It's yeah. Really, it's wonderful and i love it it's yeah. like uh writing music yep. and then hearing it yeah and then you're like oh that's not exactly how i wanted it to feel so here's like you know whatever it's much yeah. like it's like that that's a the different idea of handing I over a script and moving on with your life <laughs> would be yeah. insane yeah yeah right because it's that's like you've only done as a writer you've only done half the thing because i got to yeah. see yeah yeah I, well, well that's I, the cool about having like a relationship with the other with your writer and artist is that like you get to have a dialogue instead mm -hmm. of a pen pal Yes, ab absolutely. And we're uh, James really and I, together. 
James and I are working together. We're in the same room together very often. Yeah. And that, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, it does. Um, I need that, that thing about knowing the page turns and all that. Mm-hmm. James, whenever he comes over to my house, he immediately scrounges through my desk because he <laughs> knows that I draw out the comics. Oh. And I get zero artistic ability. Yeah, and they're still so it's like he's celebrating his slow child, and he just he has piles of my artwork, and I'll. I'll just... Oh, that's cool. See, I, I love that. I love that kind of stuff because then, like, as an artist, you're like, okay, this is what he wants. And yeah, this is, yeah. This is the awesome. sacred text that really is. Yeah, what we're going for. And I have to sometimes to to write the words. I have to sometimes it just comes. Yeah, and then at other times I just need to look at it and be like, "Well, what's happening here?" Yeah, uh, because yeah, it's such hard. a different medium, and I I come from writing other things as well. Mm. Uh, Hemlock is the name of your story. Yes, uh, I have described it to James. the The way that you went about creating it, it's like there's this kid in class who never quite seems to be paying attention to the teacher, and you finally go over. And you open up and say, like, all right, let's see what you've been doing here. And you open up the notebook and there's this masterpiece on the lined paper. That's how Hemlock, it's like this discovery. I turn the page to it. I'm like, because it's got this wild gonzo heavy metal, uh, uh, which is sort of our aesthetic as well. Uh, the music and also yeah. the magazine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got that gonzo heavy metal aesthetic to it. The color palette you went with is so unique that literally the first thing I thought is that this is that awesome kid who's not paying attention in class and you had no idea he is creating universes. You have no idea how right you are. I was just so <laughs> our, this other project we just started on. I was like, I want it to have a look of like the desk at the back of the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> like I want, that's the yeah, art style that's... I want to go for. It's just the graffiti of yeah. the board in class. <laughs> you, have, you have no idea how well you just described our entire process. I <laughs> am so glad because I, I, I had to say it to you because yeah. I can't not think of it, but I was nervous. I'm like, I hope they're not insulted. Oh. I hope they understand the grandiosity of this compliment. That's perfect. I, yeah. I, 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 you're talking about the colors. There's this, I mean, he, he's kind of problematic now, but uh, there's an interview with um, Robert K, uh, the creator of Brandon Stimpy, where he got on his crew for using like your, your primary colors. And ever since then, I've been like, I have to mix every color. Like there are no out of the tube colors anymore. I feel like oh. that's like an important part of making something new is just to not like use what's, coming out of the tube Um, Uh, it's so vivid i cannot wait to see it on the printed page Uh, well actually when this airs i probably have and i'm thrilled (laughs) i Uh, I have too by that point (laughs) uh yeah we we should uh yeah so it's gonna this is gonna look beautiful and that's one of the things that we really consider because this is the we print these books these books end up in comic shops these books go to cons these books are uh volume two is in india uh, uh actually <laughs> oh, that's cool yeah so we 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 want this to be a book that people pick up and they they go to flip through and they can't we want them to like yeah. stutter over every flip uh, and in. i yeah. know that there's no way they're not going to stop on this uh wow. and the the lettering as part of the action that you guys do uh, uh the, i'm not going to give it away but there's a <laughs> moment in the climax where the words on the page, I lost it. I, and it was the action. The words on the page are pretty much the action, and I lost it. So creative. What What are you guys working on now? Well, really, like um, right now, it's funny because this project, like I said, it was sort of, a, or like you said, one of us said, uh, it was sort of a re igniting of our process like we had kind of taken recovering from the quarantine yeah (laughs) yeah it really killed our momentum and so this is us kind of digging out and and starting again and so um we're obviously going to be doing more um submissions to anthology type stuff to get our feet wet again um but then to be honest hemlock was so fun for us that it's become sort of our main focus yeah we want to turn it into a thing we're like this is this is awesome let's see what we can Um, where it goes so (laughs) So that's sort of what's on the horizon for us that's sort of our long-term goal is to continue this particular vibe, you know? So. Different, but like the same, yeah, yeah, the things that we learned from this project, yeah. I'd, I'd like to explore. This is a huge compliment for me too. I'm always nervous talking to people about their art because I don't know what their influences are. Right. But Hemlock to me 
is like, do you know uh, Rick Remender's Black Science from Image? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, it's got first three volumes right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, and what an ending. It, it just gets oh. better. But Hemlock is like Black Science by way of Looney Tunes for men. Okay, oh, Looney Tunes is a huge, like Marvin yeah. the Martian is like <laughs> such a huge influence for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I, that, that's the greatest compliment I've ever been given. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. I'm in my uh, office. Right? I'm, in my, I'm in my office, which my wife hates coming into because I've basically kept all my favorite crap for my entire yeah. life. So I mean, oh, that, yeah. that, I had that like when I was 12. Uh, but yeah, no, I love Winnie awesome. Tunes. And it's this dark edge, but not, it's not, that's the thing is that Hemlock isn't dark. It's, it, it's, Man, visceral stuff is happening, but it's somehow just gleefully psychotic. And well, that's kind of what Looney Tunes was like. Right. <laughs> it's just Looney Tunes with gore. It's the same yeah. idea, gleefully psychotic. I like that. You ever see uh, the episode? The uh, it's an earlier one with Bugs Bunny and the Gremlins uh, on the military. Oh, yeah, I mean that's the violence in that episode is it's brutal. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. And that that's the feel. So I, I, folks, I cannot wait for you to see what the Hill brothers uh, have done, <laughs> uh, Michael and Case. And uh, uh, I am really excited about this. Guys, where are we looking for you right now? Uh, our biggest thing is uh, our weekly, we do a podcast called Man Bites Dog. Find it on all the podcast places. Really um, stupid. You it's really stupid. It. It's not really about comics, but sometimes it is. Yeah. Anyway, it isn't. Um, and then on Twitter, that's where, where, where we are. I talk about video games on Twitter a lot. Uh, that's about it. Um, and, and art, I I have a hard time with self promotion. So I tend to like keep art in my sketchbooks and at home because I'm bad at That's why I kind of need him around. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I have an Instagram that's that case hill um t-h-a-t-c-a-s-e-h-i-l-l uh, that i update infrequently but occasionally yeah, but more so than twitter more well twitter yeah it's much more art on instagram than there is on twitter um and uh we're always doing stuff and we're always trying to make something yeah um, and he runs the man by dog it's that man it's man by dog pod on twitter he runs that okay and I'm on twitter, anxious mike on twitter and instagram can you buy our comic book anywhere yeah as of when this is going out you sure can on our website <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> thinking, thinking man bites dog website okay, let's yeah. go through that uh, yeah it's gonna be on man bites dog dot blog yeah there'll be a comic book there um <laughs> have them we just you know we're we have so organized what's the name of, what's the name of the comic book uh bear slayer yeah the bear slayer right, so you want to go to google do man bites dog do bear slayer all in the same yeah. search bar Find yes, it. and yes. you will find all that they have accomplished since this video was shot yeah. building an empire. Yeah, there we go. Of Maybe. Hill Brother uh, uh, content. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the dream. Now, <laughs> now you have to do it, or people are yeah. to totally disappointed. <laughs> no pressure. Totally we'll screw it in January and see what happens. <laughs> Folks, uh, Containment Breach, go to fugitivepoems.com. And order Containment Breach Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, depending on when you're watching this. Go to uh, On Fugitive Poems, click the Kickstarter button. If we are kickstarting still, Volume 4, you're going to want to get on it. You're going to want to back it. Otherwise, you're going to want to order it from us. We do not have bad stories in these books I, I'm because it's because that's my goal. This isn't me just saying something we don't let stories we don't want those those anthologies where you get like three really great ones and the rest are uh, yeah yeah no we've got killer stuff and i gotta tell you the hill brothers are a major part of that um guys thank you so much for being with us today thank really you so much enjoyed working with you uh, oh, I, I absolutely uh fugitivepoems.com at fugitivepoems on instagram at fugitivepoems on twitter uh, at CDMETC. I know it's terrible. I didn't know I'd be using it to self promote on Twitter. It's my initials, etc. CDMETC. Ah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, come check us out. We are Fugitive Poems and we make comments. <laughs>